One page rules is a big fat rip off of Warhammer 40K. There I said it, and that's what I thought until I played it. And I still sort of feel that way, but it's pretty interesting. Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Eons of Battle. Wargaming is a very specific level of nerdiness, and I thought I had seen it all, but a little game called One Page Rules has made me question everything. One Page Rules is a tabletop wargaming rule set that is designed to be fast to learn, easy to play, and completely miniature agnostic. You can use any models you happen to have around, and wink wink nudge nudge, that means Warhammer 40k models. And One Page Rules is better than Warhammer 40k. And that's really all I'd ever heard about One Page Rules. Once upon a time, somebody got fed up with Warhammer 40k, and so they decided to make the same game, but good. And that's always kind of rubbed me the wrong way, as somebody who really likes Warhammer 40k. And I mean really likes Warhammer 40k. But I finally tried out this game, and it was kind of shocking. Playing this ripoff of a game was one of the most interesting experiences I've had in the hobby. One Page Rules and Warhammer 40k are both aimed at the same crowd. The large size sci-fi army war game, and right off the bat I want to put them head to head. Compare them apples to apples, does one beat the other? Warhammer 40,000 is an absolute institution of a war game. It has a 45 page rulebook. This thing is massive, but you actually only need about 45 pages, and annoyingly, they're all right in the middle. To play this game, you also need a codex with about 12 more pages of pertinent information, and as of right now, there is a three page errata that you have to know about, or else you're cheating. One Page Rules has a 12 page rulebook. Yes, it is a little bit funny that One Page Rules has a 12 page rulebook, and then you also need a two or three page army book to go with it. In terms of material needed for the game, although 40k books are very pretty and premium with hardcover and full of cool lore and illustrations, they cost a lot of money, and they're not cool toys, so it's hard to justify the purchase. And the writing in the 40k rulebook is dense, full of lawyerese style writing. It's not too bad if you're already familiar with previous editions of Warhammer or other similar war games, and I will say 10th edition is a little better than previous editions. But One Page Rules is an absolute breeze to learn. The book is written in plain English and is very digestible. It's easy to follow the rules, and there are very few rules interactions, so you don't have to backtrack and cross-reference anything. And there are diagrams for anything complex, and honestly, I never needed to look at the diagrams. The rule set just made sense. In comparison, I have read and reread and reread and reread this rulebook, and I am still not 100% confident that I am nailing every aspect of the game. But a couple of reads of this, and I am completely confident that I understand this game. So in terms of pregame, one page rules wins. It's fast, it's free, versus dense and expensive. It's a landslide victory. They're polar opposites. But what about the important bit? What about the game? These two games, which in so many ways are the same game and have the same feeling, play very differently. Let me first lay down what I don't like about Warhammer 40,000. Warhammer 40k is a game played in five turns. In each turn, players take it in turn to work through five phases. Command phase, which usually takes about a second, movement phase, shooting phase, charge phase, and fight phase. And it works pretty well. But it does set up for a somewhat stressful turn one, because... Going second on turn one of a Warhammer 40,000 game stinks. Especially if your opponent has a strong alpha strike or a lot of indirect fire shenanigans, or just a boatload of shooting, it can really quickly start to feel like you're just getting your teeth kicked in before you've gotten a chance to do anything, because you're getting your teeth kicked in before you've gotten a chance to do anything. And this is all down to Games Workshop's core game mechanic, I go, you go. In Warhammer 40k, you take turns doing everything your army can do, and then the game gets handed off to the other player who does everything their army can do, and then the turn's over, rinse and repeat. And this is a bummer not just because one person is going second, but also because it can take a while. In 40k, every unit in your army makes its way through the morale checks, moving, shooting, charging, and fighting, and during that activation chain, you might cast a stratagem or two to further add to the pool of things. If your army has 15 units in it, that is potentially 60 things for you to do while your opponent is just standing there, across from you, just sort of looking at you. And that's my biggest gripe with Warhammer 40k, and it's kind of the way it's always been. Grim Dark Future is a game played over the course of four turns, and they use alternating activation. Players take turns selecting one unit at a time, and that one unit can do one action. Pass, move shoot, move further, or charge and fight. And that is it. And it kind of makes the game fundamentally different to Warhammer 40k. And I think it works pretty good. It's frankly shocking when you're playing the game how fast this happens. When your activation is over and it's time for your opponent's activation, it can be your turn again in minutes, if not seconds. And this bouncing back and forth gives it a completely different feeling to Warhammer 40k. Even though you're probably playing with the same models on the same board with the same objectives, same secondary objectives, it just feels different. 
And one page rules is not my first experience with alternate activation. In fact, basically every single miniature war game uses alternate activation. Star Wars Legion, Shatterpoint, Bolt Action, Conflict 47, Armada, X-Wing, The Other Armada, Dead Zone, Firefight, Song of Ice and Fire, Clack. Even some games are trap games like War Cry, Kill Team, and Lord of the Rings all use alternate activation. It just works. It's about the bounce. That constant back and forth just feels really good. I really think Warhammer 40k would have benefited from this style of gameplay. The only reason they didn't add 10th edition, I think, is it comes down to two reasons. The first reason is alternating activation makes the game much more reactionary, where you're always trying to react to whatever it is your opponent just did. Where with I Go You Go, you have an entire battle plan in mind, and then you try to execute on that battle plan, and then the game gets handed off to your opponent, and then they do the same thing. The other reason I don't think they dropped I Go You Go is because that's just how the game has always been, and if they changed it, it would fundamentally change the game, and it might alienate some older players. Now to turn the tables a little bit, there is one thing I really like about Warhammer 40,000 and its counterpart in one page rules really bothers me, and that is the morale phase. Morale in war games usually sucks. It's not shooting or punching or moving tactically, it's just some contrived negative that's applied to your units. And one page rules morale system kind of blows. If your unit gets knocked down to less than half strength, you need to take a morale test, a single dice roll, and if you fail that roll, your unit is now pinned. So what does pinned mean? It means your unit can't do anything and must sit there motionless and spend their next activation unpinning itself. And then you get to play with your models again. And it gets even more punishing in close combat, where your morale test results in checking to see if you pass or you're routed, which means your models evaporate. And this doesn't feel like an overwhelming victory for your opponent, it feels like you did it to yourself because it was you rolling the dice. And if you get unlucky, the rest of your unit disappears. We had one particularly punishing event where an orc war boss lost eight of his pleb orc boys, and because he failed his morale check with a roll of a one, that full health war boss up and left the game. That didn't feel right. We learned pretty quickly that it's important when list building in one page rules to take units in such a way to best ignore the morale phase, with attaching leaders with good leadership or special abilities that help negate morale checks. Warhammer 40k with its new addition instituted a brand new system to replace the morale phase, and that is Battleshock. And in comparison to every other morale system I have experienced, it feels rather elegant. If a unit falls below half strength or is forced to take a test from some special rule, it rolls a 2d6 checking it against its leadership characteristic, and it either passes or is Battleshocked. Battleshock units can't hold objectives, and that is perfect. You have stolen the victory points from your opponent. They still get to play with their toys, but you are in a better place to win the game. It's really good. I really like it. And you know what else is really good and I really like? The models from today's sponsor. Demo games and art of the genre are launching a new crowdfunding campaign, Revenants Run, a one-page rules compatible series of sci-fi miniatures that are available as either STLs for you to 3D print at home or as high-quality physical miniatures. This campaign consists of two fully fleshed out factions, the Knights of the Quantum Accord and the Rebels of the Steel Spectres. The Spectres include robots, assassins, and noble warriors, which make for a ragtag horde army. And the knights feature heavily armed and armored badasses who are few in number but powerful on the tabletop. Not only are these miniatures a perfect fit to proxy into your favorite tabletop war games, but they also have rules for use in one page rules. The campaign features beautiful data cards with fantastic artwork and all the stats and information you need. These miniatures have been my first foray into one page rules and I've really been enjoying them. And if you're really chomping at the bit to try them out, you can find both of these armies on One Page Rules Army Builder app under Verified Creators, where you can start building your army list today. To call this campaign jam-packed would be an understatement. The campaign is live now, follow the link in the description below to check it out for yourself. Both One Page Rules and Warhammer 40k are good, and I enjoy them. But which one do I enjoy more? Well, that's a surprisingly difficult question to answer. When I set off on this journey, I assumed that One Page Rules would be fine, it'd be cute, but how could it really be a simpler, easier version of Warhammer 40k without feeling like a watered-down version. Another great thing about Warhammer 40,000 is its presence. It is by far the most popular wargame, and that might not really feel like a fair point to bring up, but it's true. Wargaming can often feel like a very lonely hobby, especially if you don't have anybody to share it with, but because of its popularity, you can hop online and join everybody else who's really enjoying the game. You can talk tactics on Reddit, you can show off your army on Facebook, you can watch YouTube videos about it, you can play video games set in the universe. And all of that content makes the game feel alive and fun, even when you're not actively playing it. Can little one-page rules compare to this? Well, to my surprise, kinda. It doesn't have the breadth and scope of Warhammer 40k, but what it does differently, it does really well. And what I really appreciate about this game is that it wants you to play the game. This becomes really evident when you read the rules, which are free by the way. 
If you go on OnePageRules.com and go to their Army Builder app, which is really good by the way, you see the 25 official faction books, but right there on the real website is Community Army Books, a collection of completely fan-made factions with full app functionality. You can create your own units, upgrades, war gear, and the app makes it work with the game. One Page Rules Army app is completely open to fan creations, and anyone can take anything they want and turn it into a functional army. Taking a quick look through the lists, I found Xenomorph Aliens, The Predators from Predator, Fallout, My Little Pony, Starship Troopers, and The French. Once I learned about this, I immediately went on to the army editor and made rules for my Gun Gun Army. This Gun Gun Army, the only one of its kind in the world. And in about 40 minutes, I had rules, working rules with points and everything for these guys. And I can make my grand army of the Gun Guns go up against Space Marines in one page rules. And that is pretty amazing. What One Page Rules offers is freedom, and the level of creativity that is encouraged and officially supported has blown me away and instantly made me a big fan of One Page Rules. I'm very impressed. What I expected from One Page Rules is that it would be a little bit mean-spirited. The anti-GW crowd that's been badgering me to play this game kind of soured my opinion of One Page Rules. Not knowing anything about it and only seeing it be used by people who want to rag on 40k kind of colored my expectations in a very negative manner. But after diving into this game and experiencing everything it has to offer, that couldn't be further from the truth. One Page Rules is a game by Wargamers for Wargamers. In conclusion, One Page Rules has not replaced Warhammer 40k for me. When I play Warhammer, I get competitive. The game is hard and I want to win. The rules are dense and I want to conquer them. My Black Templar have been crusading for 10 years now and they're not slowing down anytime soon. In the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. But One Page Rules is a great game, and it lets me play Warhammer 40,000 more casually. It is truly a beer and pretzels game, where the rules are clear and concise, and you're encouraged to play the game however you want. The alternate activation is a joy, and when I introduce friends to the miniature wargaming hobby, civilians who aren't used to it, I'm definitely going to be showing them One Page Rules. It's a really good game. Did I mention it's free?